So this is an interesting one, but hang on, sorry. I'm just gonna. So this is an interesting one because I decided I was going to attempt to move everything I have ever done from Home Assistant, and this is a lot of things, all in to Homey. So, over the last five years, people have been saying to me, if you gave Homey another chance, you would dump Home Assistant in a heartbeat, because... It just works! I, I think they might all be Philips Hue users. It's meant to be, right, for people who want to be able to do the whole Home Assistant thing, but don't necessarily have the technical skill to be able to do so. Because despite the fact that the Homey hub can connect to almost as many devices as Home Assistant, and get all of those different smart home devices connected to one hub, and therefore one app in your pocket, they've managed to keep this kind of childlike innocence about the whole thing that makes it so easy to use that even a smart home dunce like my wife could do it. A genius like my wife could do it. In this week's episode, I'm going to be comparing everything from the setup process between Home Assistant and Homey, adding a device for the first time, all of the devices that I have and have not been able to add to Homey that I could add in Home Assistant, and then a summary of what I feel about the two ecosystems and the fact that one is a hardware and a software solution, and one is actually technically just a software solution. The thing is, I've been able to bend Home Assistant to my will, I've been able to break Home Assistant on more than one occasion. The question is, how far will Homey let me bend her? Which is exactly what Mark Zuckerberg was thinking about Jeff Bezos's wife. Naughty Mark Zuckerberg. Not even attractive. What do billionaires think this is what women are supposed to look like? <laughs> Thanks to Homey for sponsoring today's video and for sending me their Homey Pro Hub, their Homey Bridge, and a front. Always nice to have a front. Always nice to have a front. The Homey Pro has Zigbee, Z-Wave, Thread and Matter, it has Infrared and RF. It can basically control anything on the planet, technically. It works with Amazon Alexa, it works with Google Home, it works with Apple HomeKit, it works with Home Assistant. I mean, it does. It has Ethernet and Wi-Fi built in, in case you wanted to put this somewhere not plugged into your router. And it's the only smart home hub I have ever seen that works directly with Akara devices without any messing about whatsoever. So I'm not gonna lie, this one is scary, because I, <laughs> I use this all the time, and uh, factory resetting it uh, is, is nerve-wracking, because I don't want to bollocks up my existing setup, but you know, for science, right? A few minutes later... Oh no. <laughs> I think I factory reset this for no reason, that doesn't work. Shitty <laughs> balls! Okay, actually quite a bit of messing about in some cases. I'm gonna tell you all of the good things and all of the bad things. This is a completely honest review. I'm gonna be as honest with you as I was with Alanis Morissette. Told you before, stop grabbing me! And no, none of these stories are ironic, they're just horrible! Times I have to tell you, it's just horrible, Lana. Just pack it up, get a dictionary! Stop it! So Homie really do have their work cut out for them just in this room alone because it's completely insane. Um, I've got something like five or six different protocols running in here over about seven or eight different manufacturers. I'm gonna try and take you through some of them. So this is a hyperspace cube. There are three of these around the office. They're all Wi-Fi based using WLED in Home Assistant and I have so much control over them, it's ludicrous. I don't know of any other smart home hub that does WLED, to my knowledge. We've then got IKEA light bulbs, six in each one of these lanterns, and if you've ever tried to pair IKEA to anything other than IKEA, you'll know it's a complete and utter nightmare. We've then got a Govi glide here, Govi LED strips all the way around the ceiling, and a Govi light behind my Star Trek emblem over there. They're all using Wi-Fi. 
We've got Zigbee 3.0 lights in the ceiling from a company called Zignito, and they are really, really good. Very powerful, very colorful lights. We've got an Akara ceiling light, which has two separate entities that are controllable. Home Assistant finds both of them and can control both of them. And again, Akara does not play nice with anybody, so that's gonna be a fun one for them. We've got a TV running Android, um, and I turn this on and do various things with it using Android ADB commands at the moment. And again, Home Assistant handles that wonderfully. Another hyperspace light and a Philips Hue light at the back there. I, yeah, I know, Philips Hue. It just worked! Uh, but it's, I had it kicking around and I wanted to have a hand in the Philips stuff just for demonstration and testing purposes, so that exists. Uh, there are two Zigbee bulbs here for when I'm doing my filming. Uh, that one's from Link End, which nobody's ever really heard of these days, and that's a Zigbee bulb, and I think, Oh yeah, that's not it. There's an infrared receiving aircon unit up there. So I currently blast infrared using my Lincoln Link blaster um, using Home Assistant. And again, not something I've really been able to do with a great deal of other products. However, this that I'm testing today has built-in infrared. So hmm, let's find out what it can do. Um, I reckon about 50% of this room. <laughs> let's find out. Hello? Hello. Become energy aware electricity meter interface. So apparently this thing will go on my uh, outside electrical cupboard meter on a little LED that blinks away and count the number of blinks. It will count the number of blinks and report it to Homie and Homie will be able to tell me how much energy I'm using at any given time, which is nuts. That's a lot of nuts. I've been sent a Homie Pro, a Homie Bridge, which apparently extends stuff like RF and infrared, I think. A Homey Pro Ethernet adapter and uh, a bunch of kryptonite. Netflix and chill. Uh, Netflix is open on TV. Huh. Well, that's not something I expected to be able to do. Nor should you expect it to work, Paul, from the past. Why? Because it doesn't. So the infrared blaster this thing can do should be able to control your TV or your aircon or your set-top box all those sorts of things because it can blast infrared. What it can't do is learn infrared. It's all reliant on a database, and if your gear isn't in their database, it won't work. I have that problem. I have a Fujitsu aircon unit, and I also have a Philips TV, and neither of those are in the database. I thought they kind of would be. It's not like a Philips TV is unusual. Um, and whilst this database is growing all the time, I strongly recommend that if you plan to use the infrared aspect of this, that you check their website to see if your stuff is supported before you purchase. Hello. Uh, Paul from the further, further future here. And uh, yes, I am a 43-year-old man dressed up as Marty McFly. Um, so I had to add on to this, right, that it turns out, having spent a bit of time with this, that you can, in fact, if you can't program the remote, you might find there's an app specifically for it. My Philips TV has a Philips app in the Homey app. And you just install the Philips app into Homey, and then you can actually control that TV just fine. You might find that your TV works just fine, your aircon unit might work just fine, it might just require a separate app from the built-in infrared app. I can't recommend enough that you search on the Homey website to check that the things that you want to control are in fact controllable. I'll let him get back to it. See you in a bit. It. All that said, you can use a Broadlink device instead to blast infrared because Homey works exceptionally well with Broadlink. And I really ought to point this out, if this is a side-by-side -side comparison to Home Assistant, Home Assistant doesn't have an infrared built-in blaster, you have to buy a Broadlink device anyway. Now Homey will cost you quite a bit more than Home Assistant will to set up, but we'll talk about side-by-side -side comparisons for cost at the end because it isn't as vast as you think it might be. Uh, what do you, you want to carry on, Paul, from the past? You might as well. Okay. I'll let you carry on with him. Ah, oh, this shiny. I'm always impressed when they've, like, got things set up so you have to do as little as humanly possible. There's zero messing about, is there? That's just it's doing the firmware update for me without me having to tell it to do a firmware update. So, uh, this is quite good, isn't it? Correct. It is good. 
that's exceptionally good. It's because there's no building a Raspberry Pi. There's no faffing around with setting stuff up. It just kind of gets straight to the point and says, what are your rooms? What, what kind of building do you have? And then you start creating your devices and sticking it in rooms. I don't think it could be more straightforward. And although Home Assistant has come on leaps and bounds with its setup process, there's nothing quite like plugging something in that already has its Zigbee radio connected, already has its Z-Wave radio connected, already has infrared and RF ready to blast. A lot of people ask about Hubitat versus Home Assistant versus Homey. Hubitat these days is a little bit more complicated to use. Home Assistant is now actually quite easy to use once you've built it. Homey is ready built. It doesn't get any easier than that. I've, I've basically done it. <laughs> Check this out, right? If I hit uh, studio mode, that controlled basically every light in this room. I think it did control every single light in this room. And these things I'm clicking up here are called moods and they're super, super easy to set up. So I've got like sick mode, which dims all the lights or if I'm not feeling great. We've got chill out mode, which is kind of the default. It's the thing I use most of the time. We've got studio mode, which brightens all the lights up, ready to work. Uh, and then we've just got like photography area, which turns on the photography area lights so I can get working. I know this isn't automation. I mean, we're gonna get there in a second. The, the whole Home Assistant crowd right now, I think probably see this as a personal attack and it really isn't. Just watch till the end of the video. No? No, you're just gonna come over here and beat me up instead. Okay. Although it isn't as complex as Home Assistant, it is very, very close. I don't actually think I've found anything that I personally want to do that I can't. So we walk into this room now. I should see. The cabinet lights, come on! <laughs> it does the whole automation thing incredibly incredibly well and so much more straightforward than it is in Home Assistant. I have done some incredible things in Home Assistant, but in Homey, I've been able to do exactly the same things without looking at it going, what does that mean? They've got this thing called Flows, which is their equivalent of automations in Home Assistant. I've created really simple routines for this room that say when the presence sensor from Akara, which I was able to add using the HomeKit app in the end, when that thing sees me between working hours, set the work working mode for this room. When it sees me after working hours, set the chill out mode. I could set it in exactly the same way, so when I walked over to this portion of the room, the Akara presence sensor would go, he's in that zone, set studio mode. And I think I'm probably gonna do that. So I've got all wall LEDs. How quick is that? Considering there are lots of different LEDs, that is just exceptional. Okay, we're gonna start out with dashboards because, I mean, this thing behind me, right, that you see all the time, that's an actual dashboard from Home Assistant and it looks like Elcar's Star Trek because I made it so. <laughs> see what I did there. Um, it took a long time to do that. It took me five seconds to make a dashboard in Homey. Like, literally just like, I wanna plonk those things there and it did it and it looks gorgeous. It doesn't look like that though. Um, it also only works in the mobile phone app if you scroll and go clicking, clicking, clicking until you get to the dashboard section, which I don't like that. So I'd like to be able to have either the dashboard open straight away as soon as I open the app or have a separate app for opening the dashboard up or have the dashboard in a browser. None of those things are possible. It's the further, further future. You can tell because there are cars flying around in the background. And Homey have now told me that they intend to have it so that your home screen can be replaced entirely with a dashboard. So as soon as you open the app up, you'll get a dashboard. They've already gone some way to doing this and have been sent a beta version of the app in which I could add dashboards to the home screen so I could open them from there. They're also saying that you will soon be able to make it so that you have a kiosk mode in which individual users will be locked into individual dashboards. So if your wife has a phone, if your kid has a phone, you could have them so that it can only access certain aspects of this unless they enter a PIN number. Really cool. Uh, back to the, the present. Yeah, see you in a bit. <laughs> Home Assistant also wins out for sheer volume of devices. 
Reolink is a good example. I love my Reolink cameras and they all work in Home Assistant. There's no such thing in Homey yet. Homey relies on apps within their ecosystem. You go to the Homey app store and you install stuff. Currently, there's no Reolink app. Maybe one day there will be. The one thing that is obviously missing and it doesn't matter to me because I don't use it, is Toya Smart Life Wi-Fi devices. Toya Smart Life Zigbee devices, you could add to their Zigbee antenna, but the Wi-Fi stuff is entirely missing. And this is a huge missed opportunity if you happen to have a lot of Toya Wi-Fi stuff. So I think I can sum this up quite succinctly. If I went back in time and spoke to myself of four or five years ago and said to myself, would you like Homey or Home Assistant? and I told myself everything that I had to do to make Home Assistant work on a regular basis, my former self would go, do we, do we still have sex with our wife? And the answer to that would be yes, but in between bespoke configuration dot yaman fires. And younger me would go for Homey 100% of the time because I can actually get myself 99.9% .9 of the way to where I am now within the space of a week, not years like it has taken me to get Home Assistant to the point that I want it to be. The only things I'm really missing in Homey are the dashboards because the dashboard in Home Assistant is so malleable um, and I can't send ADB requests across my network to my TV to get my Android TV to do things like load Netflix. I would have to do a workaround with infrared instead. And you might be thinking, it's so much more expensive than Home Assistant. On your screen right now is a side-by-side -side comparison between Home Assistant Yellow, which is a comparative spec, and Homey. And you'll find that the price difference isn't that much if you take a year of Nabucasa, and if you take a year of Nabucasa three times over, in three years time, the Homey will have cost you less money. That is a worthy consideration because Homey has free cloud support and Home Assistant does not. Am I personally going to dump Home Assistant? Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Home Assistant! Of course not. What I am going to do is I'm going to use Homey for its Zigbee and Thread and Z-Wave and all of its radios. And I'm also going to use it for probably creating some automations and then use Home Assistant to fill in the gaps and act as a dashboard over the top, just like I did with Hubitat. If you're asking which I prefer between Hubitat and Homey, that's Homey, just easier to use. As usual, there are links in the description as to where you can pick all of Homey's stuff up if you're interested. In the meantime, this video was brought to you by these incredible people. They're my patrons from Patreon. Without them, I'd still be working at a call center. I'm thanking them personally every week, and this week I'm going to thank Steve Allen and Ursula Schilk, my newest patrons. Thank you so much. If you want to be like those guys or like those guys, you can do that at either Patreon or buy me a one-off beer at PayPal. And either way, I would genuinely love you forever. These are my Facebooks, my X's, my threads, my Instagrams, my TikToks. Come and hang out there and can be your best friend. See you next time.